Well, thank you for joining me. My name is Jason Wright from New Loyalty Entertainment, and this is a commentary for NET, um, otherwise known as Neural Executable Technology. Um, this is a movie that started way back in 2001, um, so that's you know just about 11, 12 years ago at this point. And this was our first uh, attempt at a movie. So we'll see here uh, some of the progression and the, the skill between the different episodes. This intro here was shot many, many, many years later. Um, I had this intro in mind. And because this was the first big project that I had edited together, um, I was a little bit limited on my skill set. So coming up with an intro was a little difficult, but I did come up with something fairly unique and uh, a little, little more interesting than just rolling uh, regular screen you know, credits and basically what you see here over time is the screen opening up to all uh, the full view of, of the content so there we've got the title and uh, just noticing there missing a period after the T So look at this. This footage is back in 2001 uh, using a high 8 camcorder. That's a Ford Escort, uh, I believe EXP. I forget the year on it. I think 87. That plug you see in my ear is actually a phone cord, just a regular phone cord that I have stuffed in my coat. Now this first movie was far from planned out. And um, I had, had a, a number of notable issues going into post-production. The video quality is just really torn up from the aging of the tape. You can see Mike's Mustang there. And that's me firing away. Those are composited effects in there. And that was a first foray for me to uh, get into compositing those types of effects. Um, I'm laying them over the top, but if you're able to pause it at a certain section where I'm firing uh, one of the guns, you'll see that the flare is actually over the uh, tip of the, the nozzle of the gun there. And uh, what I did there is go frame by frame and cropped out on um, those sections so it would appear that way. I am driving on the wrong side of the road here, and uh, no, there's no nobody around the turn holding traffic. We just kind of did it. Now we didn't have anything to bridge the gap really. Um, there was no script here. Uh, we were just coming up with things as we went along. We had a few discussions beforehand. We just sort of uh, went for it. Uh, this, this area, if you're wondering, is the Cougar Creek Trail which ties into the Salmon Creek Trail out in uh, Vancouver, Washington. He actually put his gum on the tree right there. We went back and cleaned it up, of course. Got a Matrix-style dodge in there. You can't really see it, but the dirt poofs up a little bit um, when he was running there. So you might want to go back and take a look at that. Um, there's a few more instances of that throughout. What was interesting is trying to put in the effects and not have it look like um, the the effects were better quality than the video because the reality is that the effects are better quality overall. So I actually had to reduce the quality of the flares to sort of uh, uh, blend it better. Where's the disc? Well, Mr. Dole, that shot is is shot separately. Uh, it wasn't when we were down there. It was actually in a cul-de-sac. So that's the end of the first episode. Uh, this is episode two now. And again, what we're watching is the full movie. Uh, this was shot a number of years later. 
I want to say two years probably after the first portion. Uh, unfortunately, still using high 8 camera, although you could tell the video quality is much better. Um, I think tape quality advanced somewhat. Using an old, old IBM computer back there. This next piece is a little interesting to put together. We had so many uh, mess ups in this particular section. <laughs> that splatter. I am so proud of that splatter, you have no idea. Um, there's a little bit of shakiness on it, but overall it adheres to the wall. And let me tell you, that was a, a very tough frame by frame task. There he's pulling out his regular corded phone. Actually, that's where the cord is from. That's in our, these guys' ears. It's from that phone. Here you've got uh, Mr. Anderson, Kyle Anderson, the next agent in line to the throne uh, to complete the mission. One of the things that cropped up as I progressed into post-production is I realized that there's just a lot of gaps in the story, and unfortunately there's no real way to fix that. I mean, you just got to kind of keep progressing forward and piece together the best story you can with what you got at the time. Because uh, again, uh, these things, this, this episode here was more planned out clearly than the first, uh, but still, uh, we, we weren't quite at the phase where we had the detail of the shot types and whatnot. We just kind of got in the environments and, and went for it. You can see Kyle driving his uh, his car. It's actually his his car, and all the cars driven here are, are driven by the actual owners. I say it that uh, works for an undercover car, wouldn't you? It's not flashy. It's got a little bit of style. We got Corey there looking at the letter, uh, basically given the disc. And that's what Kyle is after, or Mr. Anderson, I should say. I do like this particular section here. I do wish I had a few more cutaway shots in between. Um, because you have issues where your actors might be moving a little bit, and that kind of prevents you from being able to cut to a next shot because the movement is a little bit jarring if you keep cutting between mid-movements. Here you got Mr. Anderson uh, checking out the room here, looking for his subject in the disc. And there he goes, he's taken off. This is actually their house. Um, Kyle and Corey are brothers, these two people we're watching now. You got a little poof on the pole there. And a little bit right there on the mailbox. Again, composite effects. One of the things that I thought was funny is that, you know, I tell Kyle, okay, all right, we need to speed out, and we're, this is a chase. We need to chase him down and get him. And uh, he'd always, you know, back out nice and safe and slow, which, you know, in hindsight, that's definitely a good thing. But, you know, when you're trying to put together a fast paced scene, and you're going five miles an hour makes it a little uh, tough to pull that off. So there's actually some sections where I time stretched it and uh, sped up the the shot. So it looks like he's driving faster. I think this is one here. Yeah, Corey was chewing gum there as he was running. <laughs> this is at uh, Ridgefield High School, out in Ridgefield, uh, Washington. Not a fan of the camera quality, obviously, but I do like that shot. Mr. Klein, I know you have the disc. You can make it easy for yourself and hand it over, or we can do this the hard way. So you've got a little bit of dialogue between Mr. the two here. Klein, it is inevitable. You cannot escape. You've got some impact. Now that piece right there, you notice the brick has has been blown Did apart. It's actually just a chunk missing out of the brick that happened to be there. So what we did is we filmed it in one angle, then we 
essentially knelt down a little bit and uh, had the same shot, so it looked like it got shot out. That's the obligatory um, taking the, the jacket off shot there. So now we're going to head into uh, an epic battle between two people. It's a, a showdown for the disc. And then we lead into some of these cutaways. Now the interesting thing, the reason why you're seeing these cutaways here, not an actual fight, um, is because it was just difficult to figure that stuff out. Uh, we got into it, and about two hours into trying to lay out what we're going to do, it's just not something normal people can do without some training beforehand in combat and that's just as simple as it is. Uh, the scenes that you saw were, were us trying to go through and, and uh, you know act out a battle but it, it just didn't uh, work out the way we wanted to. Now here we're watching episode 3 this is shot using a mini DV camcorder so the quality is in, uh, it's far improved from the previous episodes this was shot in 2005, if I remember correctly. Who are you? Who the hell do you think you are? Remember when you shot me point blank? Uh, the cell phones we're using here are toy cell phones. They're not real. Either way, it doesn't matter anymore. I got new priorities. And I'm at Lloyd Center Mall in the uh, parking garage. Right, is it? And uh, Victor here is at uh, Westfield Shopping Center in Vancouver, Washington. Now, one of the things I'm not afraid to mention is that you can clearly tell that um, my appearance has changed through the three episodes. Actually, I was getting heavier. Um, that's a whole side story. Um, on its own. Um, so if there was something I could go back and change on this, be that I, you know, I, I would be in shape for these these roles. Um, but you know, at the time, you got to go with what you you have and and who you got and what you have to work with. And uh, you know, this episode, I'm extremely proud of. This dialogue scene uh, was a lot of fun to put together. A little bit limited on angles. Um, again, just. Uh, a lack of knowledge in, in some respects. And uh, that car you saw me drive is a Ford Focus. Uh, I want to say it's a 2005, 2006, um, something like that. So we might be shooting this in 2006, 2007, but uh, regardless, you can tell the quality is improved. This is my favorite shot out of this episode right here. Um, it's just beautiful, great nature shot, uh, just a, a great setup there. Now the whole thought here is that, you know, Victor is someone who stripped uh, this character's family away from him entirely, and um, this is a place that uh, this character and his loved one used to go um, all the time. So, you know, he's dropping a flower into the water there, uh, paying homage basically to the relationship he used to have. Now one of the original thoughts here was to have uh, Victor basically be um, a violent character. And you can see he's got no fear of uh, creating pain and hurt. And that compositing shot was uh, fairly difficult to put together. I like how this blended in here nicely. I actually had to take audio from uh, another scene of just ambient driving noise and mask that over because I actually had the radio on and playing a, a song in the background. I can't remember which one it was. So here we go. Unfortunately, there's nothing real solid to bridge the gap here, but uh, basically we're leading up to a final showdown. It's another location in uh, Vancouver, Washington. And keep in mind, everything you're watching here in this last episode was put together by two people. 
Um, oh, just so two smart. people. The two people you see in the movie are the two people who worked on the movie. So if you're sitting there wondering, oh, there's no camera movement, you know, it's kind of all stationary. We actually made it as fluid as we possibly could um, with just working with two people. So, you know, we had to go and, and film a set of shots a certain way, then the other person giving the camera and they film the other person as they act out the scene. So there's a lot of challenges in doing that. Uh, Brian did particularly well at uh, at looking uh, scary. Uh, Brian, of course, playing Victor. And here you've got gun players, far improved. We've got some good lineup and some impact shots on those trees. Give it up, Victor. There's no way out of this. A lot of audio piecing together in here. Um, it would have been really nice to have more of a close-up shot when I went down there, but... Um, just didn't think of it at the time. So you got me kind of in a haze. I'm in some pain. That's an artificial uh, flare in the background there to drown out the shot a little. Awesome uh, impact shots there. And Victor finally goes down, and uh, and that's it, right? Zero is uh, victorious. After all the uh, struggles he went through, surviving his uh, last episode with uh, Victor in the room uh, back when we saw that in episode one. Just a moment of reflection here. So there you have it. Uh, that's Neural Executable Technology. Uh, that's the full movie. Uh, definitely a lot of challenges between the, the different episodes, and I think you can see how the quality changed between episode one to episode two to episode three. So there was a lot of um, movement in a positive direction. Uh, some of the key skills picked up in this one were compositing and creating distance on sound and uh, fitting in ambient sound uh, a little bit better than um, you know than just uh, uh, slapping it on there and, and expecting it to pass over. Uh, there's so much to a film beyond just what you see. Um, most of the experience is behind what you hear. Because if you couldn't hear anything and you can only see, then it, it, there's a limitation there of, of the kind of entertainment you can receive from. Uh, the, produ the production that you're watching. So here we got the credits rolling. A lot of people to thank there. Um, special shout out to uh, Young Lee from Gak Attack, um, who just by publishing content uh, got me moving into this direction again and uh, really jump starting this passion all over. So obviously you got to have your shameless plugs here. And yes, to everyone listening right now, watching right now, uh, thank you as always for your support. Please like, share, um, tell your friends uh, if you enjoyed this uh, movie. And just when you think it's over... It might not be. Anyway, that's uh, everything from uh, New Loyalty Entertainment at this time. Again, my name is Jason Wright, and uh, thanks for watching.